The Food Network's Girl Eat World host and one of South Africa's first master chef, Kamina Petta, has launched her first e-cookbook, Eat Glocal. The traditional Indian cuisine, uh, cuisine book rather, is a collection of recipes that she grew up with uh, and combined them with technique or ideas that she experienced during her travels. Now, the Girl Eat World foodie joins us now via Zoom to share more on her book. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Kamini. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning, Zimbabwe. Thank you. I mean, what inspired this book? And I mean, the, the name of the book, It's Glocal, is very catchy. Uh, what's the significance of this name? So, Glocal is a marketing term. It means to think globally but act locally. And that's exactly what this book is. It's taken inspiration with regards to, like, how I cook, the kind of ingredients, the way that I serve things from my travels from Girl Eat World, as well as other personal travels. And then it's put it in a very like South African Indian context so that it's, I think it's quite accessible and it's quite a global, it's for a global palette, I would Mm -hmm. say. Okay. And who is this book for? Who are you targeting? I think anybody that enjoys a little bit of flavor and a little bit of spice in their food, all of these recipes are not about heat because I think there's there has been this misconception that Indian food is all about spicy, you know, so hot that you that mm. you can't really breathe. But this is about delicate flavors that all work together. And yes. it's for people that want to be able to eat lots of flavor, but do it every day in a way that is lower carb, a little bit healthy for you and just just very regular. It's the way that I eat. Yeah. And you lean more towards traditional cuisines with a bit of a twist. Tell us more about some of the recipes. So (laughs) on MasterChef, the judges would keep saying, put yourself on the plate and make your dishes personal. Yeah. And this collection of recipes is the way that I cook and I eat. So the recipes are all designed so that they're made for small batches. So like two people, two to four people at most. And it's cutting down on your carbs. It uses whole foods. It uses everything as naturally as possible. So I'm hoping that there are lots of other people. Actually, I know that there are lots of other people like me who want to eat flavorful Indian-esque food, but in a healthy sort of way. Yeah. And uh, for someone who is well-traveled, why did you decide to put together Indian food uh, traditional e-book specifically? I think during lockdown, you know, when we were all out here making banana bread and doing sourdough and other such things, it's, I was, I'm back home in Durban and I was able to eat and cook with my mom and my gran. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to engage with recipes and food from my past. And obviously I have Indian heritage. So a lot of that was Indian food. So when I thought you know, how am I going to make uh, biryani, which is typically either meat or fish or vegetable with rice? I mean, like, how am I going to make that work for my modern palate and the way that I want to live it here now? So one of the recipes is a cauliflower rice lamb biryani. So you're still getting all those beautiful, earthy, warm flavors, but you're doing it in a way that is very carb and calorie conscious with the cauliflower rice, which is also one of the global food trends at the moment. So, yeah. I mean... This collection of recipes couldn't get any more personal than it really is. Are you a person that follows recipes or are you simply spontaneous, Kamini? So, do you know what? I think when you've been cooking for a long time like I have, I have loads of recipe books. They're pretty much the only books that I buy in hard copy. Mm -hmm. And I'll go through them and I'll get inspiration. But I don't really follow them to the T. But I know that I am not in the majority. I know that a lot of people want to know exactly how to cook a thing. So what I've done in Eat Local is I've, so that it can be as precise as possible, is I've used weights for everything from your flowers and vegetables and all of your, all of your ingredients so that you can get it as precise as possible. Okay. Now, in just seven days, it will be Valentine's Day, and uh, we know that so many people will be making those out-of-this-world meals, impressing their loved ones. So what's the easiest meal that you have included in your book to impress someone? Look, I think that if it's going to be Valentine's Day, it's a date for a good date for me is about something interactive and it's an activity and there is a prawn garam masala gruberg and pea risotto which is 
very easy once you get all the ingredients. The only thing that I think people find a little bit difficult is that it does take a little bit of time. But because it's Valentine's Day, what better than to like huddle up in the kitchen with the person that you care about and cook a risotto together? I also, there's another recipe as well, which is one of my absolute favorites. And it is the cardamom, white chocolate and sunflower seed blondies. Mm. Because I don't believe that any meals compete without something sweet. And this recipe happens to be gluten-free, but it's got like that beautiful earthiness from the sunflower and like a little bit of spice from the cardamom and the white chocolate just to make it super, super decadent because it's Valentine's Day and we should celebrate a little. And I suppose the most important thing is to focus on health food or healthy meals. But some people have been lamenting that, uh, you know, getting or putting together a healthy meal can be very, very expensive and, and costly. Your thoughts? I don't think that healthy food has to be costly. I think the way that I've looked at health in a sense is about your balance of ingredients and then how that relates to your balance of flavors. So I don't think that healthy food needs to be expensive. I think all the ingredients that I've used in, in this entire book are very accessible. Like you can get them at any grocery store. And I think it's just the way, every, the way I think everyone should cook and eat. Okay. And uh, for experimental cooks like myself, uh, is it advisable to merge uh, the various dishes like the Italian dishes with uh, Asian dishes all in one? Do you know what? I think your time spent in the kitchen needs to be fun. And <laughs> like, I think there are two kinds of people in the world, those, those that like to cook and those that like to eat. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe people just need to pick a side and go with it. I think this ebook was designed so that it can be fun it can be as quick as humanly possible because let's be honest nobody has loads of time to waste in the kitchen making food but um yes I, I think the element of and i'm not a big fan of the word fusion but mixing those cultures in a way that sits quite comfortably i think is is easy enough for anyone even an amateur cook you know, Kamini, I've interviewed so many chefs on this platform, on this show, so many times. And uh, most of them, they've been saying that you, should, you need to eat your food first with your eyes before you actually devour on the food. And, and I suppose then uh, it's very important that uh, we focus on arrangement or yeah, the arrangement of the food. So what are some of the most important ingredients that uh, people should pay particular focus on uh, you know, to ensure that uh, in terms of garnishing the food and in terms of making it good? Look, I have to agree with all the chefs that have been on this show. Food styling, you eat with your eyes and then you eat with the rest of you. And I think an easy way to do that instead of, because I think a lot of people add like loads of bits and pieces, easy. And I think the freshest way to do it is to use herbs. So, you know, a bit of fresh coriander, some chives, some parsley, whatever you have um, going on. The other one I quite like, and if you're not allergic to, is nuts, because depending on what your dish is, if it's quite soft, you can add loads of texture and also make it look beautiful with a couple of nuts. And uh, would you advise the use of dried spices as opposed to uh, fresh herbs? Oftentimes, I think, depending on what spice it is, because sometimes your spices need to be cooked to activate them, and yes. sometimes they can taste a little bit raw unless they've been sort of invigorated by oil. Okay. So I think be a little bit wary about dry spices as garnish. Okay. Now, the ebook is currently out. How do people get a copy? And uh, please do share the website. You can download a copy from eatglocal.co.za, mm -hmm. which I'm super chuffed with. And it's, it's live now. And anyone can follow me um, at Carmeny Patha on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all the information is on there. Ah, great chatting to you, Carmeny. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. We just spoke to MasterChef as a winner and a foodie, Kamine Patha, who did a 180 and made dishes her own by breaking the rules in her new e-cookbook, Eat Local, in pursuit of achieving the perfect blend of flavors.